Okay. My Wi-Fi has been so bad. Hopefully... This is better. Um, I hope so. It's not my Wi-Fi. Don't yell at me. Okay, let's try it again. Hi, Elsie. Okay. Hi. <gasps> Hi. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm sorry. My Wi-Fi is so bad. Oh my god, it's okay. I was like, I hope it's not me. <laughs> no, it's 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 always been me. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm okay. Yeah. You know, day by day. That really is the, the mantra. It really, it's crazy, but it is a every day. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I know. Take a deep breath. What are we gonna, what's gonna happen now? Um, I know. I mean, things have been... There's like, I feel like it's been like one step forward, two steps back, one step forward, three steps back. It's been rough. It's been hard to to see and especially, but I'm glad that people are now paying attention to the epidemic that is black trans women yeah, men being murdered um, because I, I forget I forget who told me. Um, I think I'm not sure who told me. I don't want to say it wrong, but someone I did a live with told me that it's actually been declared an epidemic. Yeah. That's no, it's insane. I mean, it was, um, I went to, you probably saw it in the news. There was a big uh, Black Trans Matter rally here in Brooklyn. Um, and it was just like the most powerful thing ever um and it was so many people and i saw so many of my friends and um i really felt a glimpse of like oddly really optimistic for the first time that i haven't felt probably in months about all of these things yeah. um and then it kind of went back when i was reading about um toyin the black activist who was murdered and assaulted and it is really such an emotional roller coaster of so many crazy things in the world happening um, and still having to work and show yeah. up for your friends and your family and do all these things. Um, my husband was saying to me this morning, he's like, I just think you're being so hard on yourself because this is like, none of this is normal. Like this, we've never had to deal with all of this at once. Yeah. Um, it's always been like, yes, in my mind or talking with my family about racism or about these issues and about equality. But I think it's just constant every single day coming up all the time that it just feels like the air feels heavy. It is. But I think that's what needs to happen. I mean, it's clearly what needed to happen in order yeah. for anything to change. And it's, you know, I think maybe in, I, I've said, I was talking to my friends about this, like maybe it, took the world kind of pausing for a second because of a global pandemic for mm -hmm. people to look at their phones and see what's happening around them and pay attention. There's yeah. so much that's paused right now. And I think it's a blessing. Like no one's worried about the box office or some other irrelevant, like mm -hmm. summer fashion trends. It's like, we're, we're, we're focused on more important things. And I think that's what caused this revolution of sorts. Yeah. Um, pretty amazing to be in it. Yeah. Do you feel like you've, do you feel like you've had like so many conversations about this that you never would have had before had these things not happened? Absolutely. I truly like have, and, it, and I'm trying to ask myself, like, why did it take this? Why did it take this? But I think it's just been a, an eye-opening period for a lot of people, a lot of white people, a mm -hmm. lot of, you know, people like me who never really had to confront it mm -hmm. before until it was there. And you right. were like, whoa, you can't avoid it now. And now every day happens where I think about 
either, oh, am I stereotyping this person? Am I, you know, am I judging them? Am I assuming things about them? Am I, you know, it's, it's kind of you, you're stopping your thought patterns. I think things, I mean, it's been a very impactful time for me. And I'm, I hope for a lot of other people, I think a lot of people are really learning a lot, which is what to me is most important right now. Like I can just hear people talk, hear what they have to say. I'm learning so much. Mm -hmm. I'm, and then I'm implementing that on my day to day. You know, I'm going out of my way to make sure I'm, you know, I'm alert. I'm aware of the things happening around me. And if there's something that happens, that's, you know, if I see racism in front of me, I can call it out and see right. it is. Whereas like my binders were on before because yeah. I had, it wasn't, you know, it, it, it wasn't something that I was on the, on the other end of. So I wasn't taking time out of my day to even think about it, which is the unfortunate reality of, I think most white people, I'm not going to say most white people, but I think, you know, it's like, it had to be shoved down our throats in order for us to be like, oh shit, I see it. Yeah, it's a, it's a different, it's definitely a different time because I think that people um, have traditionally associated racism with like overt, like KKK, like you're in a hood, you're doing some crazy shit. And it's like, that's not the only kind of racism that exists. Right. Um, and I think that we have definitely like, in our generation conditioned it to only be a certain type of behavior, a certain type of stereotype of what it means to be racist. Um, and it's interesting because like I had this conversation with my dad the other day because he's from Alabama and he actually ended up moving up north um, to Wisconsin where I'm from to get away from the KKK because he was very just sick of overt racism and he was joking with me. He was like, yeah, I mean, I left and, you know, I wasn't like being chased after and I wasn't like necessarily afraid of being lynched or anything anymore. But it's still it's other kinds of racism that he had to deal with of then like, yeah, you're not going to get this promotion or like I'm subtly going to just, you know, not appreciate who you really are and not um you know, and to participate in all these microaggressions or, you know, not actually see you for the person that you are. And it, he was like, it wasn't really that much better. Like, it was just a different kind of racism. Yeah. And I think that's what people are opening up their eyes to because we've traditionally taught people, you know, as, as, as a country, I feel like of, well, that's a really bad thing. But there's been so many other subtle microaggressions and behaviors that I feel like we've just ignored and that, that those things are also now being open. I totally agree. I think it's like the subconscious, you know, things that we were taught through media, you know, of, of stereotypes and, and I, I, yeah, I think it's, it's just been kind of ingrained in a lot of us. And uh, yeah, so what you said, a hundred percent spot on. Um, but so people who, who aren't, who don't know, you are the editor in chief of Teen Vogue. That's correct. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, thank you again for coming on here and talking. Um, yeah. Really appreciate it. I think Teen Vogue is a very, and I hate this term, woke, but <laughs> it is true. It's like, you know, I was thinking about that this morning. I was like, it sounds really dumb of me to say, like, we are kind of a generation of woke human beings, but I think we are. Yeah. I say culturally relevant. I, there I you go. It sound but yeah I mean we, we try to do the good work um I want all young people to always feel really seen and heard in everything that we're doing and I think young people um I mean like I'm still young too but I think it's like we're the people that are going to start this movement and make all these changes like it has to be it has to be us and I'm, I'm really grateful for us to have the platform so how do you think this is gonna and how do you think this movement right now is going to impact your work in in the media kind of because you know <clears throat> so much of what we learn i feel and, and you know are taught about the people around us and stereotypes whatever is is through media is through mm -hmm. what we read, commercials what we see the tvs the movies like how does how do you think your line of work is going to be impacted by what's going on right now 
Yeah, I mean, I got into fashion because, you know, I was like watching the hills and I was like, I just think this is so cool and I want to do this. Um, and there were zero, you know, black people on that show. And I think that um, a lot of my work has always been fusing these fashion conversations into culture and inclusivity. Um, I think that what's really been important to me has been, you know, you can really love fashion, you can really love clothes, you can really love going to shows, but also care about the world and care about helping other people and humanity. And so I think for me, it's only heightened my passion to really change things and continue to really be a ladder for other people and help other people in the industry come up that haven't had the opportunities or the chances or they don't come from, you know, if you don't come from money, you don't come from a certain family in fashion, it is really hard to get your foot in the door um, fashion is expensive. It's expensive to look the part. Um, the jobs don't pay that well. And so I was always hustling, working three jobs, waitressing, doing what I had to do to just be in the door at least. Um, and I want to continue to make that easier for other Black people, Indigenous people, people of color to be able to have these kinds of opportunities because it, like you said, it directly affects what people start thinking and believing. Um, yeah. And if you have more diverse minded people in media, what we're digesting is better. Yeah. 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 What we, I mean, I've been talking to, I talked to Asha, who's a Black actress. Um, and she, you know, it's just kind of, you, I'm stopping to think about how each, how this industry has really played such a part in in all of this mm -hmm. and how we just have to do better going forward uh when it comes to just portraying what the world actually looks like rather than you know the 90s sitcom version of what the world looks like which is what right. people gravitate to you know i think it's it's a matter of expanding that and um hopefully i think hopefully a lot of good art and stories are going to come from this. I think so too, actually. I think a lot of people are taking the time to analyze the content that they want to be in and, and content they want to put out, whether it's in Hollywood or media and saying, you know, if I'm going to be in this campaign, like I need to make sure that, you know, this is, you know, speaking to all different kinds of people, or I want to make sure the production set is diverse, or I want to make sure that whoever's in the cast of this show or this lineup is inclusive um, and using your power to do that. And I think, you know, it, especially with media as well, like it's like, I want to make sure that we're representing all different kinds of voices and we're not just, you know, talking, circling the train of the same thing. Like we have to, we all have to do better. And I think that's the best thing about this movement. And this, this isn't just a moment is like, we all are, I think, realizing like we all have a part in this. We all have yeah. to do better it's all like an individual process. It's not mm -hmm. just like, oh, these people need to do better. It's like, no, right. you need to do better yeah. as a human being, um, which is really powerful. And I think a lot of people are taking ownership of it, which is encouraging and which is why it's so encouraging to see so many people at these protests, um, mm -hmm. which by the way, people need to still be wearing masks, which yes. I will say to anyone watching, please keep wearing masks. Yes. It's amazing to go out and protest and do that, but obviously we need to make sure that COVID stays under control because things in LA are really bad right now. I don't know how things are in New York. They're saying we're gonna open on Monday and I don't believe them. Like, I don't believe this. It's just scary, it's scary. I think it's people aren't taking it seriously anymore and it's like, yeah, whoa, this is, you know, we still need to, Make yeah, sure you still need to wear a mask. I saw a ton of people out this weekend hanging out at bars and with their friends with no masks on. And I'm yeah. just like shaking my head here at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be part of this nonsense. Who hates going out to bars and anything like that. I'm like, no, I'm staying in. Like, Oh, yeah, me too. I'm perfect. not a bar person. I'm very, no, I'm good. Thank you so much. Yeah. So. I'll be right here if you need me. Um, <laughs> But you and I were talking a little bit about how this has affected mental health right now. Um, and I'm, I'm someone who loves to talk about mental health. I think it's so important. And I think, I think maybe for the black community in particular, this is a very 
it's very ho hopeful for all of us, but it also can be very traumatic. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, what can you, can you speak to, to that a little bit, what your thoughts are about kind of the mental health? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it, it really is truly an emotional roller coaster for a lot of people, um, because definitely on one hand, you want to be informed and you want to understand what's happening. And, um, you know, you want to see, you know, what other, what is happening on the news, if there's development in these cases and all of that. But it also is traumatic to, you know, watch a lot of these videos of people being killed and of these situations that are just insane. It's not, um, I have not slept well in over, I would say two months now. It, you just, it's not, you can't really grasp it in your mind. Um, and I think that a lot of people have traditionally thought that you know, oh, that just happens to someone else on TV or that just happened because that was in the South. But now I think it really has hit home for a lot of people that this is just not, it's not changing. And this is kind of the reality that we're in right now. Um, and it's it's been hard. I mean, I definitely saw a lot of people posting about, you know, try to be productive, try to do all these things, like try to keep busy. And, and there's just no right or wrong way to go about this. Um, I remember, you know, the when I was first reading about Amon Arbery, I just had to lay down. I, I literally was just laying down the full day because I couldn't get up. I was just so like, I cannot believe in 2020, people are literally hunting down a man in the middle of the street and killing him and it's on tape and it's like, we're still waiting for an arrest. It was, I think that a lot of it is um, every single day, just trying to get up and trying to inform yourself, trying to, you know, get involved as much as you can, but also rallying other people and saying, look like this, like we can't continue on like this. Um, and it is, it's just, I think it is a lot to, to then also have to work and have to be around people and smile. And I mean, someone like myself, like I'm still managing people. I'm still running a brand. Like I can't just shut down and be like, I can't take any more of this. Um, and so it is, it is so many things, but um, I think personally for me, like I'm a person of faith and praying is really a huge part of what has, I think, kept me afloat. Um, you know, and just like trying to force myself to go on walks or, yeah. you know, do a journal prompt, you know, do just do something to at least help myself um, renew, because it just has been feeling exhausting, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I think, I mean, I've seen a lot of things where it's like, you know, that we need to, f we need to fight for what's going on right now. But also, you can't fight if you're not taking care of yourself. Yeah. And I think maybe people are forgetting that and burning themselves out a little bit. And, and, you know, I've seen posts that are, like, it's, a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And it's true. It's true. You know, if people were even asking me, like I did lives six days, seven days in a row or something. And then people were like, are you done? Like, are you going to like, n no, I'm not just going to do this for a week and then be like, I did my part. We're good. Right. Yeah. This is something that's an ongoing discussion and I will continue to do. And it's, it's just an important thing to do. It's not just a momentary, it's, it's not just a moment of like, okay, let's post this stuff. Let's make sure Instagram is full of all this stuff. Right. Then Support I, these businesses. <laughs> I can get back to my, you know, whatever it is. That was me. Like, yeah, me. no, yeah, I, I got it. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, that's exactly I, how I feel. Yeah. Exactly how I feel. I want people to understand it's really, it is really a privilege to be able to think that this is a new thing to tap yeah. into this moment. Um, it is really a privilege to not have to, you know, know these things firsthand, to not actually have to be scared for your loved ones to, you know, not feel helpless. It really, it really is a privilege to be able to separate yourself from these things. Um, and I want people to really understand that like when you have that privilege, you should be doing even more. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about that because we did talk a little bit about um, the idea of a white ally and how, uh, you know, maybe 
I think uh, Monique Melton, who's uh, I had on here, mm -hmm. she's a great speaker and she was posting the other day about how it's not, you know, it's not enough just to be like, you know, thinking that you're, you're fight, you're fighting the fight and then you're done. It's something that is a continued conversation. And it's also a very personal conversation that you need to have with yourself. I think if you're not using this time, this is like, you have all the time in the world right now. Mm -hmm. If you're finding excuses, like <laughs> pandemic, what are you doing? Like nothing. <laughs> if, if you have not taken this time to reflect on yourself, right. shame on you is my, is what I say. What I say. I feel like I've, even before, you know, George Floyd, I, w I was really taking this time to figure my shit out because I knew I had to. And I did this hard work where I had to reflect inward and like dig up some shit I did not want to dig up and just mm -hmm. look at things. And if, you know, if you're sitting here right now, you know, all the Karens of the world are, are still, <laughs> they're hard to penetrate, but like... <laughs> For the young people watching who kind of feel like, well, you know, I did what I could do. It's like my, I guess what I would say to them and I want to ask what I would say to them is just try to reflect inward right now because as you think this is other people's responsibility, it's not. It is your yeah yeah um, okay. it, it's it's all of our responsibilities to do this internally and i mm -hmm. think people think you know i'll post something on Instagram right. and i it, you know it, it's sad in a way that a lot of people are being... right. He's gone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> i swear it's um it's unfortunate that a lot of people are reprimanding people for not maybe speaking up as much on social media and it's like look you have no idea what that person is going through you yeah. have no idea what that person is doing internally like an instagram post is great but if that person is actually like figuring themselves out and taking the time to learn and inform themselves like you don't have any right to attack someone for not posting the right things i guess yeah. is how it's like no absolutely i mean a post is a post it, okay. i don't think that really <laughs> that's not right. like starting a revolution that's an yeah. instagram post um right. yeah. no and i think i mean i think what people need to realize in a lot of those situations is like you have to look at your yourself but also your inner circle of like who am i surrounding myself with because i think that's a way that people a lot of times think like well you know I'm not overtly doing anything to harm people of color or black people specifically, but I'm like, look at your circle. If your circle, if the people all look like you and they all think like you, like you're never going to actually understand a lot of these issues that are happening. Like yeah. if, you know, and I think a lot of examples that people have said, I think are really good tactical things of like, okay, if you got married tomorrow, and I was the only black person at your wedding, that's a problem. You should know more than one black person in your inner circle that you really want, that is really part of your day-to-day -day thinking of how you develop your values and your opinions about the world. And I think, um, I can't remember who specifically said it, but it is that scenario of, you know, black people are in a situation right now where you want to be not only invited to the party, but you want to be asked to dance. Like you want to be actually included in all of the things that people are doing, not just like, okay, yeah, you can come be here. Like, we're not gonna, you know, kick you out because you're black or be overtly racist to you. But like, you want to be really thought of and cared for and protected like everyone else is, right? Yeah. And so I think that's that's what a lot of white people I think need to to just simmer on. For I sure. want that. I want that. Like I, I, I think it's such a. I don't like. How could you? Oh, I, I can't. I just can't relate to people who. Who think in that sort of like. Oh, I, I did enough. I've done enough. Oh, I have like. Oh, there's one black person here. I'm good. It's like. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that's. 
that's really frustrating for me to see as well. And, and something that I'm, yeah, I would love to open like a, I, I have very few people that I let kind of like in my life on a personal level, just yeah, because I'm for valid reasons, <laughs> quite guarded, right. But um, I didn't, yeah, I'm, I'm quite a guarded person, I guess, unless you really are like close to me. But, but even then I'm like, I would love my inner circle to be culturally diverse because there is just is not enough of that and i would you know it's just something that that's really important and i would hope that you know it's going to take a minute for things to to change and evolve but i think the conversations that we're having now like i know now that after this movement i'm going to be such a better mother to my future children than i was mm -hmm. a few months ago not yeah that I was pregnant or anything like that. <laughs> We're not but, saying that. We're talking right, hypotheticals. People. Right. <laughs> like when I'm 10 years down the road, well, I would hope maybe not that long, but anyways, <laughs> um, um, when I'm, when I'm a mom, it's like, I'm going to have this experience and this time that we went through to educate and pass on what I've learned. And like, mm -hmm. that's what I think is so important about all of this is like, if you can take this information, process it, actually act on it, work on it, work on yourself, educate yourself, and then implement what you've learned yeah. to a future generation. The world will be different. The world will be different. And the old white people who refuse to change will be gone eventually. <laughs> yeah. And they will yeah. be replaced with a generation of people who are more understanding, more empathetic, more passionate, more fired, yeah. just more educated. And I think no. that's a beautiful thing. And it's like, I'm fired up for the future generations and for our generation to be like, look, we're learning, we're evolving, we're adapting, we're educating ourselves. And it's the future is so bright because of that. And I think that's, yeah. it, it really is such a such a beautiful thing to like see my friends sitting around and talking about how important this is and be like yeah like this is this is just really like a beautiful movement that we're all a part of and we're on the right side of it and we're right yeah no I, I love it I love I mean it's been obviously like such a emotional time but I love seeing everyone really join into this conversation um and I mean yeah. Like, obviously, we're such huge fans of you at Teen Vogue. And I'm so happy that you're passionate about this and want to have these conversations, because that's, that's a really big deal. A lot of a lot of our readers look up to you. And you know, they're obsessed with Riverdale, and they're emotionally invested in the show as well. And so it is like you're changing lives and doing this, Lily. And that that really is important for you to know. Thank you. That's really sweet. Thank I feel bashful and it's hard for me to take any kind of credit because this is truly just like a learning process for me just as much as it is for everyone else I just so happen to have a lot of people who care who are follow my face you know um, online <laughs> that's why I'm like yeah let's then let's if you're gonna you know take pictures of my face and like be obsessed with my show I'm gonna try and go out of my way to make it so when you're following me you're learning something from me and you're yeah you, you can take positive away from that experience of being a fan of mine. So, I mean, that's, I guess, kind of how I've looked at it, but I also just have really enjoyed, it's just been so educational and, and humbling and, and wonderful to talk to so many people over the past two weeks and to talk to you and to talk to the future people that I'm going to be talking to. It's just been a really, it's been a really, life changing it's it really has and it's weird because it's like we're just having conversations yeah <laughs> that people are watching but it really is like shifting a lot a lot a lot of the yeah. way that i'm thinking the way that other people think it's just a really it's a really beautiful thing so thank you i mean thank you again for taking the time i know you're still working and um, <laughs> being a badass woman editor <laughs> but um <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, I really appreciate you taking the time and, and for what you said, that was very sweet. Um, I mean, is there anything else you want to 
No, I and can't think of anything. Uh, I feel like we, I mean, I, I hope everyone watching this learned something and challenges themselves to, to take yeah. a moment to reflect. And thank you everyone for watching. Yeah. Thank you again so much. <laughs> of course. Uh, stay, stay safe and sane and, and healthy in your too. Um, I'm glad you're wearing that mask and being safe. <laughs> Not I'm, I'm not the leaving the house, Lily, but yes, yeah. Good, good. <laughs> okay, good. We're, well, we're, thank we're you fine. again. Thank have, you. Have a good day. See you ya. too. Bye. Bye.